Okay, so these are the problems from uh, chapter 10. I think I'm going to do them one at a time and make different videos so you don't can easily find them. Um, so problem one. A student of four-year college claims that the average enrollment at four-year colleges is higher than two-year colleges in the United States. And two surveys are conducted. Of 35 two-year colleges surveyed, average enrollment was 5,062 with a standard deviation of 4,778. Of 35 four-year colleges they surveyed, average enrollment was 5566 and a standard deviation of 8151. And do a hypothesis test at the 5% level, level. Okay, so we're going to be doing two um, sample tests, all right, because we have two samples. And because this is, uh, we don't have population standard deviations, we're going to be using a t-test, all right. So we have to calculate the null and alternatives, and he wants to. He says that the average uh, four-year college is higher than two-year colleges. Well, is higher. That's the actually the um, alternative um, hypothesis. So we, instead of answering A first, we'd actually answer B first, and that shows us here that the four-year colleges is higher than the two-year colleges. Of course, they turn it around on you from the sentence. Um, and so because this is the alternative, our null must be everything else. So this is less than, our alternative has to be greater than or equal to. Okay, so that's how they determine those two things. Um, in words, what does this mean? Well, we're subtracting the two means, all right, to see is there a difference. All right, and that's really all um, this is. Again, we're dealing with x-bars, so um, we're just finding, is there a difference between these two? We're really interested in, is one higher than the other? But if there, it's not, then there's no difference. What is the distribution? Well, like I said, this is going to be the t-distribution. And because it's a two-sample test, um, it's not just n minus 1 anymore. All right, the calculator will give us our information. So I'm actually going to go to the calculator to get this stuff. So stat, tests, and we have a two sample t test, which is number four. All right, when I click enter, we have statistics because that's what they've given us. We haven't given us data yet. So make sure stats is highlighted. And now it asks us for x1 and x2 you know, S1, N1, make sure you're putting them in in the order we have here. So two-year colleges goes first. So our mean for two-year colleges is 50.62. Our standard deviation is 47.78. And our N, our sample size is 35. And then we do the same thing for X2. X2 is the four-year colleges. The mean was 55.66. The standard deviation was 81.51. And our sample size is 35. And again, we're looking at the null, we're looking at the alternative hypothesis. So our alternative hypothesis is less than, so you need to make sure that less than is selected. So highlight over it, hit enter. Un is it pooled? Unless they tell you otherwise, it's not pooled. Okay, they always choose no. Like 99% of the time it will be no. And then calculate. Okay, this gives us our answer. And notice here we have our degrees of freedom. It isn't just a simple little, uh, okay, I'm going to just subtract the one from these things. It, it has to do with standard deviations and sample sizes, and it's a big, ugly formula, and it's just easier to have the calculator <laughs> choose it for you. So it tells us it's 54.898. They want two decimal places. So remember, this is going to be T. And then you're, to get the subscript, because if you don't put in a subscript, it will mark it wrong, functions, subscript, and then two decimal places, 
89.8, that rounds up to, that's a zero, that rounds up to 90. Okay, so make sure you put in that information. What is the test statistic? Well, it's right here. It's t-test, always the negative. If it is a negative, make sure it's negative. So negative point, and how many decimal places? Two decimal places. Three, one, five rounds to the point three, two. Okay. What is the p-value? The p-value is right here. Four decimal places. Three, seven, six, seven, five. So that's going to round up to eight, which is how you can see that there. Point three, seven, six, eight. What does it mean? Well, as I've said always, the p-value is the probability of getting these samples if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so if this is true, then what it's the probability of getting this test statistic and these samples. Okay, so that's what this one says here. And they've looked to find the difference between the two of them. 504. Alright, so that's what it's going to do. Sketch a picture. Remember, you can upload whatever you want. This isn't going to grade it, and it's going to just check it off that you did it. So, puppies, puppies, puppies. What does it mean? Okay, alpha, they told us, is 0.05, or 5%, so we have to turn it into a decimal. Are we going to reject or not reject? 0.3768 is bigger than 0.05, so therefore we do not reject the null hypothesis. Why? Well, because the p-value is bigger than alpha. If the p-value was less than alpha, we would reject. Okay. And then what does it mean? So there is not sufficient evidence to say that they are different. All right, because we're rejecting the null hypothesis. We're not rejecting the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says that two-year colleges are greater than or equal to four-year colleges. So we can't say they're different, and we could actually possibly say that two-year colleges have higher enrollment. And then how did you determine to use the t-distribution? Well, because we don't know um, they're independent of each other. So there are two separate things. One of them did not have anything to do with the other one, and we don't know the population standard deviations. Okay, so that is how we determine to use the t-distribution.